Now for some perspective about how the coronavirus pandemic has affected small businesses, particularly in towns across the region, we turn to Brandon Chapman, who is a Pullman City Council member. Thanks for joining us today, Brandon. Hey, I appreciate it, Scott. Thank you so much for having me. We want to talk a lot about what has happened in the region, and particularly in Pullman with WSU going to online classes in the fall, Pac-12 recently saying there will be no fall sports played. But I want to back up first, back to March, when all of this started to unfold, what it was like in Pullman right after the announcement that WSU would go online only for the rest of the semester, they were encouraging students not to come back from spring break. So basically Pullman turned into, I mean, it halved the population, if not more, in the course of a few days. What was it like on the ground and from your perspective as a city council member in those early days? Yeah, I appreciate that question. And, you know, I may joke that we try to forget back in March, right? Because our world definitely did change. Uh, it's about two thirds of our population are, are defined as students somehow affiliated with WSU. We know not all of those students left. Now there's a lot more at play than just the students leaving. I mean, we were in a phase one and a lot of that included not being able to go out and sit down at a restaurant like we normally would. Some businesses were able to stay open, such as restaurants for at least carry out where other businesses that didn't offer that kind of service, they had to just close entirely. And so right from the get-go, it decimated a lot of local businesses. I gotta tell you, there were some businesses businesses that immediately said, we can't weather the storm and we have to close. There were others that have done the very best job that they can. They've been adaptable. They've tried to be versatile. They've looked at new ways of doing things, including like curbside delivery. Some of them found that that was a good practice and may even continue to do that moving forward, even when we're in phase four and when there's no such thing as coronavirus or any of this kind of stuff, right? And so, you know, this has been really a disappointing time in terms of seeing the business being decimated, but it's also seen some growth for potential collaborations in the future, for potential new ways of looking at things for some of the businesses. But we really don't want to always just look at it as let's go back to the way it was. Um, sure, we want to open up our businesses at some point, but let's let's use the creativity that we've learned through this process to to maybe be able to reach out um, and, and even reach out better to some of the students and others uh, when students do come back or when residents do feel more comfortable in, in going out and, and giving business. Um, in, in the meantime, gift cards, uh, online purchases, those kind of things are still options for, for many people. And so that's, that's what we're relying on is doing the best we can to support local, even if we don't have that payoff immediately so you might buy a gift card knowing that it'll be a month down the road, two months down the road. I wanted to, to follow up on that about the things that are being done. It is, of course, wrong to suggest that uh, WSU is entirely the force behind everything happening business-wise in Pullman and, and likewise for the University of Idaho in nearby Moscow. But of course, the two are greatly intertwined. It's it said that when the U.S. sneezes, the world gets a cold economically. And of course, perhaps the same thing goes for WSU and Pullman. Yeah. So as a member of the city council and a, just a general Pullman and Palouse area advocate, I know the, the the sweatshirt that you're wearing right there. Of course, um, what are some of the things that specifically the, the city council and just advocates for business community and the region in general are doing to help stem some of this economic cold that is coming on? Yeah, I appreciate that. And of course, as you can imagine, when President Schultz announced initially that the university was going to host classes online, this would have been about March, right after students were going to come back from spring break. Yeah, there were a lot of people that were upset about that initially. And that's the tough decision that President Schultz had to make. He made the right call, is the thing. We do sometimes talk about what is our identity in Pullman outside of the university. But let's be honest. When the university suffers, the city suffers greatly. That does not mean that university officials have to make all their decisions based on what's good for the town. I think they understand and have from the very beginning that a strong Pullman is actually better for the university as well. From a city council perspective, what are the things that we actually control, right, during a time like this? Well, um, the best we could do is try to figure out ways to uh, mitigate 
you know, the regulations that are on us. So if, if we can only have restaurants with 50% capacity, for example, well, how can you ensure that 50% capacity is a much greater amount of people? Well, you allow it to spill outside. We are doing something that has been seen as maybe it's a little messy. It's a little chaotic downtown. It is not permanent. But in the meantime, we've had businesses that have started putting tables outside on the sidewalk. And it allows that space to grow, meaning that that 50% capacity goes from, let's just say, five people up to now you can do nine, ten people. The other things that we can control, uh, you know, include things like certain staffing issues, certain um, just quality of life and continuity of, of operations. Um, though, though, frankly, because of budget, a lot of that is dependent upon the federal government. So when they send money to the state and the state sends money to us, whether it's a CARES package or whatever, uh, when we get that kind of money, then yes, we can continue to do some of the things that we normally would do. So some of that is in our purview based on contingent upon funds. And then some of it is just allowing ourselves to be more creative and think outside the box. The, the cruel irony of all of this is when I talk about thinking outside the box, that means thinking outside the box for us. A lot of the things that we're doing are not new concepts. They have been done successfully in other places. So those are the kind of things that we still deal with uh, on the city council level. I want to step back just a, a bit about what you said. You mentioned cultural. I'm not stepping back all the way to March again. <laughs> no, no, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Obviously, Pullman is very dependent on big weekends, football weekends, graduation weekend. Graduation did not happen. All those hotels and motels that depend so much on those big weekends, gone. What is the city council looking at going forward for that loss of a huge tax base? You're not going to be getting those hotel motel taxes, all those business taxes, and the business themselves. What are you sort of looking at for the future? Yeah. This isn't just in the next few months. This is probably years out, I might note. Yeah, I'm really grateful that this last year we hired a new director of finance and administrative services. And I would be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Mike Urban, um, who is our finance director. And Mike is pretty conservative in his projections. He admittedly will underestimate the amount of revenue. That can be a really good thing because then we don't spend what we end up not having. I think the worst announcement from a city perspective was, let's see if we're going to do some of these games and not have people in the stands. Those are six to seven games a year that are high impact games for the community. Your hotels are all sold out. People go out to eat. And so we get a ton in sales tax revenue. You mentioned hotel and motel tax. So in addition to the actual sales tax on a room, you will get a certain percentage that goes into a special fund. And that money is used specifically to try to recruit more people to come and visit Pullman. In a way, it's going to really force us as a council, as people who oversee the budget, um, to figure out ways to be more lean, right? To have a leaner government, to move more toward a priority-based budgeting model. And so from a city perspective, not getting as much revenue, is it harmful to the city? It is. Are there opportunities, you know, with this? Sure. You know, long-term, there are opportunities to rethink the way we're doing stuff. Certainly continuing from a permanent perspective with our downtown master plan is important because we need to create the kind of ambiance that will draw foot traffic downtown so that if you're considering opening a business of my dreams that I I've always thought about right here in downtown Pullman. And so, you know, those are the kind of things that we might still be able to do, use this as an opportunity to, to move forward and progress a little in some regards with, with our city. Thanks for joining us, Brandon. Scott, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You can see more Northwest news, coronavirus updates and resources at our website, nwpb.org. Thank you for joining us here in the unique Northwest.